Hey, hello everyone. I hope you're having a great day. I hope everything is going on well as you expect. I'm here again, the Charismatic Live. I'm having a Charismatic Day. For those who are joining me for the first time, I just want to remind you, hey, it's your boy, Mr. Adrian Fridge. We're always excited to be here, always excited to have you. And this is your background about me. I'm a Cameroonian. I'm passionate about getting people really excited. And of course, our first actually is live we have live our this car one and only in fact let me just invite her on a call so we can start together and we can be able to have a conversation i would definitely love it but for those who are here right now i want to let you know that i'm very passionate about personal development and i really sincerely believe that it's important to be able to talk about these kind of things because it is your love your relationship and anything you is directed by the different ways of the things you think about so i do have i do have many other people who are joining but for those of you who just say hi wave your hand as nafisa just did i thank her maybe some she had an issue with her wi-fi but i definitely hope to see her next maybe in the french live or somewhere but let me get a little bit further because i i have something for you guys as you're joining right now please do not hesitate Tell me where you're joining from. Are you joining from Florida? Are you joining from Wisconsin, from Minnesota? Please tell me where you're joining from. Just write it down below so I know where you're joining from. I can know that you are alive. I thank you for the love. Thank you for the like. Hey, Yannick, show sure, Yannick is joining from South Africa. This is a big boy. Big, this is my Mojipot. So for anyone who is joining, please let me know where you're joining from. Man, I want to know now. I also want to travel. In fact, I also want to go places. So by me knowing where you are, it enables me to know how much this world or this life that I'm doing right now is reaching out to other people. So please do not be shy, share it out and let people know. Okay? So please, as you're doing that, I also want to let you know that, hey, I have been doing this for about a year now. I mean, I, I think it's supposed to be like a one year ceremony that I'm actually doing this live because I started in July 2017 and this is July 2018. So you can imagine how much of a challenge or how much of a journey this has been so i want to, all of you to know that i'm really really proud for all of you who have always been on this live i'm really really proud for those of you who took your time who were able to make it even when you're so tired i know this guy we have had conversations was so like man i don't have time right now but you know what just because of you all make time for it i had otili a very good friend of mine who was calling me or had long conversations on when i prepare my life I want to use this moment to really thank all of you who are making your time. Like really, it means a lot to me. It means that you are gaining something and you are able to become better. And for those of you who have reached out to me, some of them just sent me inbox. I was like, wow. In fact, some of the messages that I've received have really empowered me and really made me to understand that you are getting a lot of value from what I'm sharing. So do, you are the ones that really keep me up. You are the ones that really keep me up in continuing doing this and making it happen for you. So I really want to say cheers up to all of you. And of course, for all the other people who are always like coming in one time, coming in next time, I know you may be doubting a little bit like, hey, what's going on, Adrian? Okay, what are you talking about today? Yes, every day we talk about a new, new topic every single week. And we believe that it inspires people. For everyone joining, please down below, write down what state you are joining from or what country you are joining from. If you're joining from Florida, please put it down below. If you're joining from Maryland, I know people from Maryland Ah, small Cameroon, please put it down below. I would definitely love to hear about what country you're joining from. And I can see Biban Zulu Lafrican who has joined us here and every other person. Please put it down below what particular state you are. Don't be shy now. Ah. So let me get started a little bit and say this. Okay, this is one thing I want to share. I would really want to share with you all. It is about emotional intelligence you didn't hear it okay let me say it again one more time it's about emotional intelligence so but if you put a thumbs up if you have never heard about emotional intelligence just put a thumbs up like hey my man adrian i don't know what you're talking about this time around i don't even know what that means so if you have never heard about emotional intelligence just put up your put up your hand like thumbs up and say hey man this man you're telling me something new right now if you have heard about it at this point in time and you're very much aware of what emotional intelligence is please put a thumbs up let me know that you are okay ah i'm talking to people who I'm very aware of it. So yes, okay. I see Suzanne is even here. Okay, good. So let let me go with this a bit further and tell you a little bit about this emotional intelligence thing that um, Adrian is ready to talk about today. But before I go into that particular, what emotional intelligence is, 
I, I want to tell you why you should care about it because I know when I'm sharing something you're like hey Adrian are you going to pour knowledge with me again I have many things to do right now okay I do not have time so Adrian please tell me exactly what you want to tell me and let me move on so this is what's happening okay emotional intelligence I sincerely believe is the key to number one your job is the key to your relationship is the key to your own passion is the key to your own personal fulfillment in your life is the key to your own peace of mind yes you are hearing me very clearly I'm saying that is the key to many things around our lives and within our lives and you may have heard how I shared today it said let's stop looking on us let's look in us because there's something very special that is happening within us and I want to start by sharing this particular quote that I heard from a very motivational speaker. That guy is just amazing. I mean, he was one of those people who speak to millions of people at the time. That guy is called Zig Ziglar. He said this. He said, logic makes people think and emotions make people act. So please, if you're listening to me right now, please write it down below. Write it down so that the next person coming knows that is what's going on. So, logic makes people think. Emotions make people act what do i mean by that logically thinking we are very rational human beings we know that one plus one is one or one plus one depending on the base base two is okay to go to one and we know that one plus one in normal base 10 is equal to 10 is equal to two but there are certain situations where you are very aware that you have found yourself in that situation when you get into a particular room you are not supposed to get the offer and then you get the offer and i can share with you some stories where i was in my college my university and i knew very well that okay i have a b in this class there's just no way i can go further you know you have been college students i was a college student myself so i'm a university of morgan state university and taking a class called chemistry i'm like ah okay oh, chemistry class and the guy was the worst professor ever ah man, man man this guy wanted to kill me he was nigerian now you can understand the context so everybody hates that guy but then i'm deciding to myself that no i must study hard i must study hard and then i finished the class and i've always been attending his class i've never even missed one of his classes so ah that guy was taking one point in his class and then at the end of the class I, like, the midterm is over finals is over i see that man it seems like i'll get the bo i go and meet him in his office the man said i'm supposed to get the b i said my man this is not serious are you serious are you for real He's like, man, uh, you're even the best student in my class. You have a B, you should be happy. I said, wait a minute, B, you'll be happy. What will B add in my own GPA? It will go down, my GPA will go down. No more valedictorian. And that's why I, I discovered something. I, I went to him because I could have just been like every other person. I just, no, normally, when you get a grade, you get a grade. You just get out, okay, disappear. But then I realized that even though the guy gave me a B and he told me he gave me a B in my final grade, I still when I had a conversation with him. I sat down and I told him, okay, I'm your best student and you're giving me a B. Are you trying to tell me that there is no other student who has an A? He looks at me straight in his eyes and he's like, that's quite true. Now that you're talking about it. It's at that point that I realized that in his emotional state, he wants his students to be happy. But in my emotional state, I'm like, man, I'm not happy. Oh. I need that A. So I had a conversation with him. I'm like, wait a minute. What do you think I should have done differently? To get an A. We're having a conversation and I'm trying to really get into understanding how much I desire that A and how much we can work it out. And then he looks at me and he tells me, okay, I will add points to everyone just because you're insisting and you made me aware of something I was not. I said, wait a minute, what do you mean? He said, yes, I will add points to everyone and you get an A. So now I sit down to myself and that's the moment where I say, hey, wait a minute, did I just get an A because I talked to my professor in class? And did everybody who had a C get a B? And did everybody who had a D get a C? So it, it, came, it made me to understand that when you have the ability to understand that people are driven by emotions, logic will make people think. The logic just made him to think that, okay, maybe, okay, we can make it out. But then the emotions, the fact that I was able to take my upon myself to understand that though he was the most hated professor, I still smiled with him. The ability for you to go beyond what people expect makes them feel a certain way about you and they value your input to the point where they believe that you care about them and you stand out. And that's what makes them act irrespective of what other people think. Action is driven by emotion. Think about the guy that swept you off your foot, off your feet. The guy that you love so much that you're ready to die for. What do you think drives you into loving him? 
it's not the most I'm, I'm sure that he does not resemble Cristiano Ronaldo because logically thinking if he does not resemble Cristiano Ronaldo he must not be very handsome but the emotions that we have in ourselves are the things that drive us and that's the worst part about it is that sometimes those emotions, these emotions work for us sometimes they work against us and now the reason why I'm sharing all of this with you is because it's a big thing now in, in, here in America and even in the world in fact I'm talking to you right now there's what they call the, the Africa Emotional Intelligence Conference. In fact, let me share this with you so you can see what I'm talking about. So, there's what they call the Africa Emotional Intelligence Conference, which actually took place in, in, on the 30th of May 2008. That was in Lagos. So, just to tell you that this is not an American thing, okay? This thing I'm sharing with you is not an American thing. It's really something that is global. Africa Emotional Intelligence Conference. Like, why should people have a conference on emotional intelligence why is this so important i understand that my my peers my brothers and sisters here now online you're like ah adrian you have not heard this thing i don't know what it's about i don't know how important it is but now that i tell me that it's an african emotional intelligence conference that people have maybe i can look into it and i want you to really give me time like please give me some time let me try and break this thing for you okay and if you have questions i better put it down below but i know i'm always coming with things that are not ordinary so it's hard for you to come with the questions but i i do understand if there's anything i say that does not sound like mm, clear put it down below and let me break it down for you but as i go a little bit further let me try and first of all give you the, the the definition of emotional intelligence so that we can start on the same line okay so let, let me do this let me read this for you so you can understand i'm not just reading from anywhere so this is what emotional intelligence is okay they state it very clearly that it is the capability of individuals to recognize their own emotions. Number one, recognize your emotion. Number two, recognize the emotions of others. That's number two. Number three, discern between different feelings and label them appropriately. We know this, I'll talk about this part in, as we're going further because the ability for us to be able to say that, ha, I'm angry. Being angry is one thing. Being annoyed is another thing. Feeling irritated is one thing, it's another thing completely different. So, we don't usually use this word because we, maybe you're from Cameroon and you have not been able to, you have, not, you have not had that education. Here in America, people use words appropriately. I'm like, man, when I'm angry, I'm angry. When I'm annoyed, I'm angry. When I'm irritated, I'm angry. Everything is angry, angry. But those words actually are key, key things that help people to understand us. The fourth thing now they say is use emotional information to guide thinking and behavior. Remember what I talked about? That logic maybe you think and then emotions take, make you act is because your habits are driven your emotions and i will share my own personal experience and what happened to me today and the reason why i went to church today and the reason why i'm even having this conversation here in, in the mall so that you can better understand how this emotion thing played in my life i had no idea and then the final number five is and manage and or adjust emotions to adapt to environments or number six achieve your goals so now you're like okay adrian I'm seeing a little bit where you're going to. I see that it could be interesting for me to, to make sure that I attack my emotions appropriately. But my question to you is, hey, this emotional intelligence thing is that thing that people used to, people used to believe that IQ or the score in, 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 in that, they usually call it, um, oh, um, the, is it QI or IQ, where we're comparing who is more intelligent and then Einstein was the most intelligent and people were like, whoa, man, I can never get to that level. And then at a point in time, even in this history, what happened is that people started comparing themselves in terms of IQ, intellectual question, where they thought that it was the ability for you to do good at school was based on the fact that you were too intelligent, too smart. And if you did not have the right genes, it means that you were not good enough for life. So people have found themselves in states where they had depression, where you are, for example, even in Cameroon, you cannot get an A in class. Your father comes back, you cannot get an A in class, and then you get back home. What happens? Your daddy scolds at you, like your father is shouting at you because you're not getting an A. And they fail to understand that the A does not determine your life. They fail to understand that there are some people who are better off in conversation, which is more used at work, than in repeating or cramming things. Then you just go and replicate. Or just saying that one plus one equals to two. I'm sure that you can know. Look at. In fact, let, let's do this test right now together as we are talking. Think about that one person who was the best student in your class. Uh huh. Do it. No, do it. Let's do it together. Okay. As you are doing, you put the thumbs up. 
think about that one person who was the best student in your class because I had that best student in my class that I know. I know some of them are seeing one of them is in Germany, one of them is in South Africa. Think about that one person who was the best student in your class. Think about those people. Where are they today in terms of IQ? Do you ever compare yourself in terms of IQ again? You will notice that you don't. Why? Because IQ is overrated. By the time you, you graduate from college, IQ is done. People don't care about your ability to be intelligent per se. When you get an A, B, C or D, your IQ retires or I would say it expires as you graduate and your EQ takes over. Let me repeat that again. If someone can write it down, please do. Your IQ expires after graduation. Your EQ starts after graduation. Now, let me say it again one more time. IQ stops after graduation. EQ starts after graduation. So what do you think you should be investing on? Should, be invest should you be investing in your IQ, your intellectual quotient? Or should you be investing in your EQ, emotional quotient? Your IQ drives you into having an A in class. Your EQ drives you into having the best and most stable relationships. Your EQ drives you into the ability for you to understand your colleagues and peers at work and have a very great relationship with your manager. Your EQ enables you to understand yourself and grow from where you are to where you want to be. Ha! Labek, before we even go into that, now that you are seeing that, okay, I'm seeing the benefits. But the question that you have for me is, Adrian, how do I know if I have a good EQ or I'm still in IQ level? How do you know? I have something for you. I have you covered, okay? I have certain signs that I want to share with you that can help you identify if you are lacking EQ, if you are lacking emotional intelligence. Can someone please write down below, EQ equals emotional intelligence. EQ equals emotional quotient. EQ equals emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence and emotional quotient is the same thing. So please, please someone write down below. EQ equals emotional quotient or emotional intelligence. So let me help you out in, I'll give you some things that I believe according to the Globe and Mail. So it's an article that was written by some people who have done extensive research and they said, ah, ha, these are certain things that they, if you notice that you have these trends and I can also have some of them. If you have some of these trends in your life, there's a high likelihood that you, you lack a lot of emotional intelligence and you need to work on it. But of course, if you stay tuned, by the end of this live, I'll be able to share with you how you can take an emotional intelligence test, which can help you understand what level of emotional intelligence you are and what are certain things that you can work on, okay? Action items, I believe, are most important. In fact, let's get started right away. So these are certain things, okay? Just put up your hand, like just put the thumb, like, just put it, just wave right now. Like if you have ever gotten stressed easily, like you are driving on the highway and then someone comes right in front of you and then the person does not even give, the, the person does not even put a sign. You are driving your car peacefully. So the person just comes right in front of you and cuts your car in front. What do you do? How do you react? Do you get mad? I can guarantee you get mad. I was driving today, this morning, in fact, I was going to church. Man. I noticed that someone was in front of me, the person was going slow. I'm like, man, this road is 70 miles per hour. The person was driving like 60 miles per hour. Man, I nearly took that person's, I nearly bought the person's back car. I, said, ah. I just said, let me take it easy. EQ, 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 EQ. I said, okay, what should I do? I looked left, I saw that the lane was open. There was a lane to the right that was open. So I looked to my right and I saw a lane was open. I was like, wait a minute, why should I get mad at this guy when I can just go to the right lane? and continue my way peacefully. I don't even know what is going on with this person. And by the time I turn to the right and then continue my way peacefully, I look, as, as I turn to the left to see who was in the car, I saw an old ma an old mother. I believe she was like 90 years old, struggling to hold her car. It was like hard. I was like, hey, mommy. So somebody was going to get mad because of old mother driving her car. I beg, there are certain things that you should not be stressed for. And that's what emotional question gives you. But I will get you in, into that later on. But for now, I want to first of all help you to identify what are certain things that could possibly make you think, make you be in a state of not be very emotional and intelligent. So you easily get stressed. Let me go a little bit further. Not only do you easily get stressed, but you have the difficulty even asserting yourself. Sometimes when you're having a conversation with people in a meeting, or maybe you're having a conversation with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, you have a hard time being able to express your emotions. That is where emotional intelligence should come in. 
sometimes it's hard for you to assert your emotions because you do not know how to identify those emotions. I can guarantee you this thing has happened and it has started broken a relationship. Good friend of mine in a relationship, amazing guy, having a great relationship with this girl and everything was going on smoothly until we discovered that he has been keeping something for so long. And I'm like, wait a minute, why? It's like, no, the real issue when I had a conversation with both of them, I discovered that no. It was a discussion about what did they feel in the moment and, and emotions can break or build your relationship. Build your relationship because whenever you're interested in someone, you tell them how you feel about them. When you want to break up with someone, you tell them how you feel about them. But when you are with someone in the, during the emotional state, instead of telling them how you feel, you do not because what? We lack the right words. And for the right words, I have something for you. Because it brings up to the third part, which is sometimes our dictionary is limited. Yes, you understand what I mean? In Cameroon, when someone is annoyed, it says he's angry. When someone is mad, it says he's angry. When someone is irritated, he's angry. When someone is frustrated, he's angry. When someone is exhausted, he's angry. When someone is infuriated, he's angry. When everything that we know in Africa is that someone is angry, full stop. But there are different emotions aligned to those things, those, emo those feelings that we have. Because someone can be frustrated, it doesn't mean they're angry. It simply means that there's something that's not going right at the moment, but then if you fix it, it's fine. They just need to talk it out. Being angry is a whole different story. It means that they are in their nerves because of a particular state that cannot change. And the definition even varies per person. So having the ability to identify the specific emotion will help a lot. So let me go into certain words that can help us out. So these are the basic words that we use. Open, happy, alive, positive, interested, loving someone, I feel strong. But let me go into the, I feel positive. So, the, so imagine the difference between I saying that I feel positive and I feel eager to see you. I say, I, I feel positive seeing you. I feel eager seeing you. Just see how it changes everything. Another thing, like imagine I say, I feel anxious being with you. I feel excited being with you. I, I, it's, it's like, I feel optimistic being with you. All of these different words really changes the game. I, I feel hopeful being with you. Have you ever read like an article or watched a movie and you see someone saying that, ah, I feel interested in you? No. So, so someone will use words like, it's like it's, it seems like it's poetry. But people will use words like I'm fascinated by you. Wow, you're like, man, yeah, you're seeing it. That's how it is. When you, you feel, I'm, I feel intrigued by you. Imagine a guy tells you, ah, baby, I feel intrigued by you, girl. I don't know, wow, this guy feels intrigued. Because guys just saying that you're interested means that, okay, you like me, that's good. They say, I'm intrigued. You don't only like me, but there's something about me that is like, ah, special. And that goes a whole different level. So imagine that can help in your game. Like if, if you're trying to get a girl, sometimes using those words really plays a lot in the ability to convey the emotion you have. So these are certain things that I want to share with you that we really like. So I will start back again by sharing that sometimes if you get easily stressed, if you have a difficulty asserting yourself, you have a difficulty in using the right words to express your emotions. And sometimes even if you make assumptions easily, and you, you try to defend yourself, like you always in the game where it is the other person, it's never you. There's something wrong. Number, another point again, number five, do you hold grudges? Do you hold grudges? If you hold grudges, I can guarantee you there's one, there's a, there's a, that's a great sign that you are certainly having, you, you need to work on your emotional intelligence because someone's emotional intelligence definitely understands that um, keeping on the emotions that make that hurt you doesn't hurt you. Keeping on emotions that don't help you, don't hurt you, they actually hurt you. Emotions are things that either they hurt you or they hurt you. And by keeping grudges, you're hurting yourself by keeping those emotions. So, and then number six is that you don't, you, you don't let go of mistakes. There are certain articles that I'm reading in the, um, the Globe and Mail. There are 11 signs that you lack emotional intelligence. So, I will share those signs, but I will, I will say this. This is the last sign I want to share with you. You don't let go of mistakes. If that's you, just put thumbs up. Oh man, when I do a mistake, I can't let go of it. You had a breakup and you can't believe that you had a breakup. They're like, man, I'm worthless. You, you lost your job and you're like, man, I'm the worst person in the world. 
this guy wanted to break up with you and like man i can't take it anymore you you you, you applied for an opportunity and you can't get it you're like man i cannot stand this every failure for you is the end of the world if you're that kind of a person i can guarantee this emotional intelligence you need it and this is what i'm going to share with you very soon as i'm going further i will share the 11 other signs in the link below please can someone just write please share those signs that's just the only thing i want you to write down below just write please share those signs i beg you share those signs so just write down below as i go further because now i want to leave from we've been able to identify the problem we have been able to see what the problem is really is okay understand that it's the lack of emotional awareness that makes us not be able to to grow into a well-rounded person have great relationships have great jobs have the ability to do a great interview skills the ability for us to have great managers that work with us and love us the ability to have the likable personality where our colleagues and partners actually love us and now i've explained a little bit why it's because of our lack of awareness yeah, and I, I broke down a little bit on certain reasons because I also told you a little bit about the reasons. Like, the, what is the, the main thing in, in all of this? Is it the fact that you, you, you get is it the stress? Is it the fact that you, you can't let go of mistakes? Is it the fact that you feel like you, you keep grudges? Is it the fact that you, you can't express yourself in words that really, I would say, depict what you feel because emotions are in different categories anger is not the same thing as being annoyed or irritated or just frustrated they are different things and now i want to provide you with a solution because we are still here for so anybody in here i want to provide you with a solution but before i get into this I, I i would like to do something for me okay as you are talking about emotional intelligence i believe that it's important for us to share the world across so please just do this thing with me as i'm doing it right now go down below as you are seeing there's a little button down below that says that invite someone so just down below share this with your friend like invite some of your friends so this is what i'm going to do right now so i'm clicking on invite my friend so invite some of your friends by the time you're done with that let me know uh like, let me just do it right away so i invited some of my friends number one that's number one number two share with a group of people that you know you have groups that you've been part of okay and i think the ability for you to create an, an environment of emotional intelligence helps you to be emotionally intelligent because just imagine that ah you're emotionally intelligent today and then tomorrow you are not but tomorrow your best friend your bestie is emotionally intelligent it's like ah, do you not tell me that i should be more aware of my emotions what happens that's how we build a habit habits are not built by ourselves they're built by the people around us whom we have grown into a certain habit and what happens is that when we shrink from our habit they help us come back in our habit so share it with your friends right now and share in the groups that you have so that they can be able to come and enjoy this as well. I know some people will see later on, some people in Cameroon. Oh, Shelly I'm glad that you are here too. Oh my goodness, it's been a while. So, <clears throat> as you are here, let me share now with you certain key aspects that can enable you to live from here to here in terms of emotional intelligence and certain practical things that you can do. Because at the end of the video, I will share a test. It's a link test that you can go on there, you can take a test. It has just about 10 questions. And it can help you to know on what skill you are in terms of emotional intelligence. I did on 200 and I had like 136. Man, I don't know if I was that good or that bad, but I think I, and it's a work in progress. And in the ability for us to become the best person of, our, of ourselves, there's a high likelihood that we need to grow. But for us to grow, you cannot manage what you cannot measure. Can someone write it down below? Shall I read please? Can you write it down below? You cannot manage what you cannot measure. And that's the same thing about the emotions. You cannot manage your emotions. You just left from a breakup. You just left from a deception, a disappointment. You're depressed. You cannot manage that emotion. If you cannot measure your state of mind. If you cannot measure the intensity of that emotion. If you cannot measure what caused the emotion. If you cannot measure the source of the emotion. If you cannot measure how to be able to switch around that emotion okay you cannot manage you cannot measure you cannot manage you cannot manage you cannot measure exactly perfect thank you very much Larry, for doing that for me now let me get into the last part of this the, the the final part where i talk to you a little bit about the how can you now get to the level where you can effectively develop emotional intelligence as, as you're right here i i would like to do this as i'm doing this I, I would like to call someone in here. I would like to to have someone testify on the use of emotional intelligence in their life. 
from all what I've shared, um, I don't know if you, if someone here is ready to share that, please just put a thumbs up and I will just invite you to the call or you can invite yourself to the call and please, I'm very open and very ready to have you on the call. So, Shalwari, are you ready for that? Because I definitely believe that you're very excited today and I would really appreciate it. So, please re hit me back up, just send the request to join the call, to join the live and I'll be able to start with you or any other person who's ready for that. So, while you're doing that, let me give you four ways on how you can effectively develop your emotional intelligence. And this is something I was shared in this a publication called Goal Cost, Goal Cast. And what they do is that at goalcast.com, they try to empower individuals. They have about 10 million followers on Facebook. They have a lot of likes and people actually love their content, not just because they're well known, but because they are effective and they are practical. And this is one thing that I got from them. One of the things that the person who wrote this article mentioned is that the reality is that one of the greatest moments in life is really centered around emotional intelligence. I, I can share with you some of those moments. For example, think about Martin Luther King. So this someone is very famous. The reason why he is famous is because he talked about something that was deep and dear to people's emotions. It was not a logical thing where someone just come and say, racism should end. No, that's not what he said. He, he spoke more, I would say, emotionally to our, our hearts because he talked about a dream. And most of us can, we all dream. So he, we could all connect with it emotionally. And I do believe that this was a moment which changed things around. And look at the moments in your own life. The moment, the day you were born, I can guarantee that was a shift in people's lives because it emotionally made them to feel valuable. I can share with you as I just became, uh, please give me a shout out right now because I just became an uncle. Yes, yeah, so I have a nephew. Uh, yeah, yeah, a big old uncle Adrian. And I'm not only proud of being an uncle, but I'm proud of the emotional change that that little kid by name Sebastian has brought into my brother's life. Because these are, there are certain things that happen in our life that really change our perspective of life. Logically thinking, okay, there's a newborn, okay, we just need to be more responsible. But emotional change is that it really makes you to think about your life and your value and your significance. It really makes you to really reconsider the emotions you feel at certain moments in life. And for that now, let me go into the four areas that you should consider when you are trying to work on emotional intelligence. Number one, develop self-awareness. So when I'm sharing this about self-awareness, like, this is what I try to mean by that. I'm trying to mean that whenever you get annoyed, whenever you get mad at someone, whenever you find yourself in a state that you really love someone, whenever you feel attraction for someone, try and stand in front of the mirror, okay? Stand in front of the mirror and talk to yourself, like talk in front of the mirror. What do you feel about you? Like, do, do I just feel a, what kind of attraction is it? Is this a mundane attraction where I just want to have sex with you? Or is it a more, I would say, heartfelt attraction? where I feel that my heart and soul seems to speak to me that there is something that you can bring in my life. So what kind of attraction do you have for that person with whom you are? So be aware of what you feel within you, especially in terms of attraction, love, be it in terms of actually making a decision in your life and moving forward, planification, the ability for you to know whether you are valuable, your passion. Whatever decision you're trying to make in your life, please, I will highly recommend develop self-awareness Stand in front of the mirror and speak to yourself. Okay, this, I actually heard one of the people speaking at church today. They were saying that it's okay to speak to yourself, but it's not okay to respond to yourself. So if you're like, hey, am I doing great today? I believe you're doing great today. No, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. So I'm talking about really you being able to look at yourself and say, I feel like I, I, I'm, not, I'm not at the level of my life where I'm supposed to be. What can I do to change it? my state of mind what can i do to feel comfortable and content with myself these are the kind of questions that enable you to be more aware because now you start asking yourself these kind of questions which dig deeper within you and it will help you discover what you're doing right what you're not doing right what you should keep doing what you start doing what you should stop doing these are certain questions that i want you to keep in mind so as you're doing that you can drop yourself if that's the only thing that you got today please you can move on with that but please, at least you got something. So number one, develop self-awareness by speaking in front of the mirror. Let me get into number two. There are four. So number two, 
I will highly recommend you try this. And this is number. This is actually one of the reasons why I'm actually glad I'm in the mall because being in the mall enables me to do this. So let me do this with you right now. So let me show you what I, where I am. So you can see this is the mall. So I'm actually in the mall right now and I'm having a great time. But that's not all about it. Being in the mall also enables me to look at people. For example, I can zoom at someone and I can walk around. I can see that, okay, you see the lady over there. They look confused. They seem that they're looking for something, but they can't find it. So you can see over there, there's like some kids playing on the rock. So what is she doing at this point in time? A spy on people. Don't point number two, I will rightly recommend, don't just look at how life is, but really let life go through you. Don't just be in life, but let life go through you. How? By your ability to look at people, having conversations around you. Go to a mall, go to a snack bar, go to a restaurant and look at people having a conversation and try to describe their emotions. Try to define what do they feel. I say, what is happening within them? Are they happy? Are they feeling concerned? Are they feeling lonely? Are they feeling engaged? Are they feeling loved? Are they feeling joyful? So just spend your time trying to look at these people. Let me show you someone who is having a reaction, okay? So let's do this. Point number two, I try to observe people. Observing people, maybe just looking at, for example, look at this individual, this, and this grandma. She's feeling very calm, eating her food as though everything's okay. Look at this individual over here who is having a conversation and he is just there having a conversation with his friends. So what does he think about? Try and try to imagine what he could be thinking about because I can guarantee you, you find yourself in a situation where your girlfriend or your boyfriend is thinking about something and there's just no way for them to tell you but if you cannot guess, you are done. I mean, your relationship might have, might take a hit. But when you're able to guess, you're able to understand them. Some people want you to understand them without you, without them telling them, telling you what they feel. So really, your ability to be able to read people's minds, that's the, that's the thing. Reading minds can really help to um, go a long way. So spy, identify. Number two, look at people around you. So but now that I've spoken about it, if you have any questions, please drop them down below. I can see we have a lot of people on the call on the live so please definitely do not hesitate to share with me kind of reaction or things that you have tried so that I can share with other people who are here so they can also try on their own but let me go a little bit further so this is something that I know us Africans we are not very into this but what I'm showing you with you right now is things that have worked for others things that have worked for many people in fact there are many books written on this particular topic number three that I will share with you but I, I want you to just consider it just a little bit okay just bear with me I'm not asking you to do yoga, but point number three, I want you to practice mindful communication. Let me repeat that again. If you are listening to me, please put it down below. Point number one, please put it down below. Point number one is about developing self-awareness. Please write it down below. Point number one, develop self-awareness. Point number two, spy and guess people's emotions. Point number three, practice mindful communication why am i talking about mindful communication i didn't just say communicate to people mindful communication and i'm not talking about making a facebook live and being able to know whether people are engaging with you or not when i put it thumbs up or not some people on my facebook live are mindful of the fact that some of you listen to my facebook live with your phone on the table like you just put your phone on the table bam and then you're like okay let me just listen to you down the go some of you are listening to me and you're driving i understand that i'm not saying about saying hey some of you you know that you come and listen later on some of you so many people will listen to me in different ways because we are very very busy like we have our life that's going at 24 7. some of you have 27 hours in eight days so it actually i uh, understand that and that's why when you're having a conversation with someone i also want you to practice that meaning that you should be able to have two things deep listening skills and mindful speech deep listening skills are busy for you to see for example let me see this Shalirik just, you can see in the comments below, Shalirik just said, hey, Adrian. She didn't just say, hey, Adrian. She said, hey, Adrian, and she put a smile in. If, if she was the one speaking to me, what I'm hearing right now is that she's not just saying, hey, Adrian. That's blonde. That's completely blunt, right? But she's saying, hey, Adrian, it's been a while. So with that smiling, it changes the whole tone. 
and now that's my that now where i'm going into learning how to deep listen because if i was me in the back man i would have be like hey adrian so what but because i have learned certain skills on emotional intelligence i've come up to understanding that some people have deep meanings which are embedded in the tone of their voice when you have a conversation with someone at work listen to the tone of their voice more than the content of their speech focus more on the tone of their voice the tonality of their voice the smoothness of their voice the sweetness of their voice rather than the content of what they are saying because most often than not the content is a black and white picture and the tone is the color of the picture and what happens is that that tone can change the whole picture altogether that tone can change the whole picture altogether so please focus on the content on the tone of the speech and not the content of the speech and that's for deep listening when you're listening to someone number two part under practicing mindful communication is about mindful speech when you speak also <laughs> when you speak really try to make sure that the speech that you are offering is able to make people feel something within themselves for example right now i tell you you are valuable and for you to stay on this call on this life for this long means that you are gaining something and you are very very exactly growing yourself and at this point what am i feeling i feel gratitude and i will tell you thank you from the bottom of my heart thank you i'm not just telling you thank you basic thank you no i'm telling you thank you from the bottom of my heart because i mean what i say and i feel what i say and i hope you feel it too so now that is mindful speech where i try to make sure that i use color in my words I'm not just telling you thank you, but I'm telling you how much of a thank you my thank you is. So you know how much I mean about my thank you. So be mindful when you're speaking with your loved ones, when you're speaking at work, don't just say, hey, how are you doing today? Hey, how are you doing today? But how are you doing today? It's been a while. I hope you're doing excellent. I hope you're having an exciting time. Add color to your speech. So let me go a little bit further and then talk about the fourth part the fourth and final effective way you can develop your emotional intelligence is really changing your perspective that's the whole point of it okay so this one is actually i would say it could be the easiest one but it could also be the hardest one the reason why i say so is because even for me look at right now okay i have been told that hey adrian you've been doing this life for about a year now and it seems like it's not progressing i i uh, would like to maybe do something different and I look at myself and I'm like, wait a minute, what do we understand by progressing? And then I think, because I think change of perspective is not just doing the same thing the same time, the same way, but turning your head a little bit and trying to see things mm, a little bit differently. And this is what I, I decided to do. So I realized that as I was having conversation, I was trying to get a different perspective. Usually getting a different perspective, you can't get it by yourself. You should get a different perspective. You have to get it from outside because we are already biased. We have our own thought process. We, we grew up in a particular mentality. So sometimes we need other people who see us to tell us how we can mold ourselves a little bit differently or more ourselves. And that's where I want you to be able to consider that, hey, maybe the things that you're doing right now don't work for you. Maybe you want to have a conversation with someone who will tell you a little bit, hey, Maybe what you're doing right now, you may want to switch a little bit around. Because personally, I've been doing this like every Sunday. I haven't stopped since July 2017 and July 2018. And I believe that I need to turn things around a little bit. I need to shift gears. And in shifting gears, this is what I'm realizing is that I can do things differently. How? By actually being able to make a live and be able to speak to a group of individuals at the same time. That is good. And who brought it to my, my awareness? It didn't, come, it didn't come to me by myself. I spoke with my brother just last night and he sat down with me and he was telling me, he called, discussed with me on the phone because I'm in North Carolina and he's there in Maryland. And he told me, Adrian, as you see this, I, I want you to grow. I want you to do things a little bit differently. I've been observing you from afar, but 
I, I want you to change a little bit of the things that you do and I want you to shake this around because you seem too comfortable with the life that you're doing so far I want you to do something that you're not comfortable doing and people can see that you're growing because you are, there are many people who are testifying that you are doing an amazing job inspiring them but nobody knows that you're inspiring them nobody hears about it and all the testimonies are kept to themselves or are kept to you so share to the world the world wants to know that what you're doing works nobody goes and and maybe buys a book and then keeps it for themselves they share with the world that they have bought this book and it works when you go and buy a dress hey my girls over here when you buy a dress okay do you just wear it in your house and you stay with it no you wear the dress outside you go into the bar you go into different weddings with it you wear the dress and you take a picture of it you show it on Facebook because you want people to know that the dress looks good on you and that's the same thing about the lessons you are hearing today so this is where I come to you and I plead with you hey if you have gained any sense of information and iota of change or insight from what I have shared with you my life on next Sunday are really going to be centered around testimonies my life next Sunday are going to be centered around testimonies so I really want to change things around and really give time my first 15 minutes just talking about how the Facebook lives I've been doing have enabled you to live from here to here so if we can do that together I believe we can incrementally change the way we see things and we can change the game all together so that more people will believe in this because of course people don't believe without them seeing other people trying some people are they are more in the i'm not ready to try what he's saying until i know someone else has tried and it has worked for them then i can give it a try we know those people right where they are like very skeptical people it's normal we're all human beings we're all skeptical at some point so let's do this all together okay so really change your perspective does not come from within it comes from outside and the ability for you to grow and become emotionally intelligent when you discover that you cannot get all of it done by yourself your emotions alone cannot drive you into getting to your goal you need someone else's emotional state of mind advice and the ability for you them to impact you check you a little bit so that you can move forward so with that being said i want you to know that emotional intelligence in my understanding is really something that has changed our perspective and i'm going to share the link with you at the bottom where i want each and every one of you to take this test and tell me what is your what is your rate and what are certain things that you can do to really switch things around and i'll recap again the four points that i shared about the emotional intelligence aspect number one is that you need to be, develop a lot of self-awareness number two is that you inspire people and try to guess try and guess your emotional state whether they're laughing, joyful, or they're angry, or annoyed, and curated. And then number three, I also mentioned that you need to be able to somehow, somewhat, in one way or another, try to figure out how to have a mindful communication. That, when I say mindful communication, I talk about deep listening, and I also mentioned mindful speaking, like mindful speaking. Then I talk about the fourth part. The fourth point about how to be able to effectively develop emotional intelligence is really centered about changing your perspective and you can only change your perspective when someone else gives you a different perspective when you're open to other people's perspectives and you're like hmm, i never thought about it that way and that helps you live from here to here i know i've spoken a lot now and i i would really love to get some feedback from you all so, so put a thumbs up if you are alive and you heard this and you love the knowledge even if you are watching it after the live, after the fact that most of you do because you are very busy at the, at the afternoon so you are certainly working. So put a thumbs up and down below and let me know how much you love it. And of course, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate. If you have your questions are around, Adrian, tell us about the story where emotional intelligence works for you and emotional intelligence does not work for you. Share with us some areas of your life where you believe that emotional intelligence are very critical and how it has changed your life, how you got a job using emotional intelligence how you were able to great be great at your work with emotional intelligence so please share with us all of those areas so with that being said i will have to sign up but i want to let you know hey i'm very glad i was here this guy i'm definitely glad you're here my first and one of my i would say my vip nafisa flora chaga i'm really pleased that you were here today so that like, man i need to make it and i can guarantee you you shook my heart you really made me to understand that sometimes you need only one person to believe in you for you to change the world just one person and you are in this particular life have been the first person to join in 
and many of you all are joining the live so really thank you very much and please stay emotionally intelligent and take the test i will share the test with you at the end right now i'll just have to share the link and so that everybody can take on the test so let me do that as i'm doing it please comment down below as you're seeing me please comment as i am showing you this test if i don't just show you right now this is the test here you can see what it says i'm going to write the name of the test here the link so you can just join in www.arealme.com and then slash eq slash uh, I don't know if they have a French version. Let me see because I know that sometimes I get questions about people saying that, ah, is there anything French? Because every time it's English, English. Can you see the French version? Let me see if they have the French version. Oh, la, la, they have the French version. So I know that most of my followers here, you are French, Francophone. So this is the French version for you. So this is going to be, let me put French. The Remy is the French version. And then this one is going to be the English version. Okay. We have some francophone live on it. And again, I'm joining the French version of the French live very soon. So please stay tuned. It's going down because I definitely believe that we share a lot more stories. So please do not hesitate to also join the French live. So let me share this with you. English and French. Please test yourself and try to see. Because at the end of the day, the most important thing is you can only manage you can only manage what you can measure you can only manage what you can measure you don't lie to yourself all right so with that being said see you in the live in the french life and i thank you very much for being here love you all take care